a stranger to the dark Hide away, they say Cause we don't want your broken parts I learned to be ashamed of a scar Run away, they say I know what autism means Autism means it doesn't mean anyone is ill or broken or have to be fixed No one will love you as you are But I won't let them break me down to dust I know that there's a place for us For we are glorious Can I ask you, what, what is autism? Well, it's kind of like a flower that kind of blooms literally anywhere A flower that blooms everywhere? Yeah Fantastic And, and there are many different species of it So so, oh, before I met you, before I even met you, before you came to Pastels, I got some paperwork about you and I read it and I thought, this boy will just be perfect for us to come to the hub. And one of the things that was in the paperwork was that you believed autism is the next stage of evolution. Can you comment on that? I don't actually remember saying it, but uh, now that I've heard it, I do. You do think that? I do remember believing it, I don't remember saying it. No. So what is it about autism that could be the next stage of evolution? I can't remember exactly uh, the reasons I gave, but had had something to do with, because people with autism see things differently. Good boy, excellent. I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I'm meant to be. This is me. Look out, cause here I could. Right. Okay, so we were just having a chat and I wondered what you could tell me about being autistic. Yeah, well, it's a disability, sort of. Okay. And in what way is it a disability? Mm, it sort of makes a person think differently than most other people. Okay. So for you personally, do you see any strengths? as part of your profile? I mean, yeah. Like what? I mean, I wouldn't be here right now if I didn't have autism. What about your extraordinary singing voice? Tomorrow Tomorrow never comes What kind of a fool Do they take me for? Tomorrow, a resting place for bones. I trap set in the slums, but I know the score. I won't take no for an answer. I was born to be a dancer now. Thing people could do seriously in Autism Awareness Week to, to do or stop doing that would help you with your autism and to manage your mainstream better? Uh, when it comes to teachers, if they could stop uh, like writing down the questions as the timer for answering them is going and if they just put all the answers down at the end that would be helpful because when they put them down you don't while people are answering them yeah, I never don't. get time to do yeah. it. And then it's like, oh, well, that one's got the answer down now. I'll move on to the next one. And then while I'm doing that one, and just, just keeps okay. looping. Okay, and this is important. This is the awareness we need to get out there. You were a green rope. Mm, that really annoys me when, like, oh, just starting to answer them. Here's the answers. Okay. Yeah. So what we can't do is we can't expect all of the change and all of the tolerance to come from everybody else. We also have to make small changes and modify some of our behaviours if we want to be an equal in this world, right? Mm. Can you think of anything that you've had to do or you've learned to do over the last years that shows you are also willing to change if we're asking everybody else to change? Turn into specific instances. I mean, I've definitely changed a lot since I've arrived here. Yeah. I mean, everything's definitely gone for me too. Yeah. I can't think of a specific one. Okay, well, you, you think and you say you've changed, Jack. 
very much ended on. But how have you changed? I don't really want to tell everyone how I started off. Okay, do you mind if I do? Yes, I don't mind. You don't mind, so I can say yes. it. Yes. What we did, Jack, is we had that, I don't have to do this, you can't make me. And that first day when we asked you to pick up a pen and write, oh my goodness, oh my hand hurts, oh my arm's broken, I can't do this. And you were slamming and crashing. Yeah. Because to be honest, having an arm broken, you can still use your hand. Well, that's what we said, Jack. Also, <laughs> also, Jack, when we had to chase you around the grounds and you were under the fence and trying to escape, all of those things would never You'd say when now. I was in primary school, I was quite escape artist. Yes. <laughs> and in fact, did you know at school, I actually improved their security <laughs> quite a lot. You are now year 11 mm -hmm. and you're approaching your GCSE exams. Yep. You are one of our most incredible students on target to get what grades and above? Um, depends on the subject. Yeah, roughly? Um, roughly fives and above. Yeah, perfect. And what I want to say, and I'm smiling as I say it, is has, it, has your journey always been as wonderful as it is now? Nope. Can you tell us a bit about the challenges you face as um, a young child? Um, when I went to my primary school, I was the first autistic child there, so they weren't really used to dealing with people like me. And I was quite badly behaved when I was younger. Um, I did hit teachers, I used to bite kids. I'm trying to think what else I used to do. Um, I used to get over hyper in PE and they wouldn't be able to control me. Okay, so different to how you are now. What um, do you think the main challenges of autism are, Lucy? Um, I think, probably for me personally, from my experiences, I think the biggest challenges is people not giving us a chance or not even attempting to understand us because we're not really that much different from people who don't have autism. We just function a lot differently and that's okay. And, and what, what is it for you? What is autism for you? How does it affect you? For me, the... Metaphor or simile that I like to use is kind of imagine that you've been chucked out of your home country and you've been forced into another and you have this giant booklet which tells you how people interact and what it means and the language and you're looking at this booklet but then people interact differently from the booklet and you still don't get it and so you're just a bit stuck. Okay. Do you feel you are ready to take your place in the world when you leave here, when you leave us in July? Mostly. Good. The parts I'm still a bit unsure about, well, I can just say, screw it, and I'll just give it a shot. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I love it. I do see. Thanks, Miss. <laughs> Thank you for agreeing to be filmed and I think you're going to be wonderful Sophia so you can just relax okay so I have a question for you if I didn't know you how would what would be a clue that you might be autistic mm. what sort of things do you need to do in the hub every day change the charts and, and turn around the transition cards absolutely and what happens if Mrs. Smith and Mrs. Kerrigan are a second late calling transition? Mm, I have to do it. <laughs> yeah. You start nagging us, don't I you? Stop nagging. So when you first came to us, you said to me, I really don't like you teasing me, Mrs. Smith. Has there been a change? Yes. What's the change? I like being teased. <laughs> what does Mr. Woman tease you about now? Gravy. The gravy song. What does he sing? I love gravy. <laughs> Do you love gravy? 
Yeah. I like gravy, not love it. No, we have to be precise with our language, don't we? Yeah. You wouldn't love gravy, would you? No. It's a silly thing for me to say. You wouldn't go off and marry gravy, would you? No. No, because we don't love gravy. We so like gravy. we like gravy. Thank you for correcting my um, vocabulary. And who's this, Sophia? Who's this handsome young man? Noah. And are you friends? Yes. Well, yes. We're best friends. Are yes. you best friends? Yes. What, what makes a best friend? We also love doing Sam learning. Yes. Both of you love that. What do you love about it? The points, the course. task house and the locations. Yes. Would you agree, Sophia? Yes. Okay. Have you ever had a best friend before? Yes. At primary school. Okay. How does Noah rate? Is he a good friend? He's good, yes. And what makes him a good friend? Helping me. Good. That sounds like you, Noah. Good. Noah, I'm going to turn my attention to you now. You okay. are a very extraordinary young man, aren't you? Mm -hmm. You've got an amazing brain. Okay, and I want to show everybody on the documentary how great your brain is. So I'm going to think of a maths question. I had to write it down. Okay. So, Noah, what is the nth term of 159 plus 13? <sighs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You told me to say it. <laughs> you told me to say that one. Okay, let's. Should I change the question? Let's change the question. And this isn't one we've written down. My birthday last year was the 18th of July. What day was it? Wednesday. Perfect. Good lad. So Noah, tell me when you're doing Sam learning, you get very excited. You start. You start doing this. What's all this about? This what is called stimming. Stimming helps you to calm yourself down from getting overexcited. Excellent. Excellent answer, Noah. So, both of you, can you tell me one thing you love about the autism pub? That it has, look, has sand, computers, other stuff. Yes. Relaxation things. What, what relaxation things? Like sand, like sand, uh, play dough. The other thing, but the Lego we only we only use at lunch and break time. Okay. And Noah, what about you? What do you love about the house? I love the relaxation area, the computers, and also the the hub lessons. So tell me something. You in particular have really succeeded in mainstream. You, you love your mainstream lessons, am I correct? Not love. We don't want to marry our mainstream lessons. We like our mainstream lessons. What has made you so successful in mainstream, Noah? Mm -hmm. Do you know, have an idea what it could be? What, what do you like about mainstream lessons? Maths, maths, history, um, geography, English, science and others. Okay. And Sophia, do you like your mainstream lessons? Yes. And what do you like about them? That they're okay. They like maths, everything. Okay, so you're very similar, you two, aren't you? I mm -hmm. love maths. Do you? You just said love maths. Sorry, you thought you weren't allowed to say I that. I love my favourite subject. <laughs> I love maths because my favourite subject. <laughs> okay. Not to marry, no. it's my favourite subject. No, of course. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. You're, you're most welcome, miss. Thank you. <laughs> such a massive big issue for us as a hub please explain to me why because we like it and it's fun and then it becomes not fun and then it's not fun okay <laughs> Oak, do you have something to say about the lego no i'm just going with not <laughs> okay so for me as a teacher with 16 young people with autism i have to try and keep some degree of control and when i have 16 children that all want lego and want the same pieces and the same bits that's why i have to put the rules in place to upset you so much okay that's but i think also, I would never have seen and i think i would be right in saying that we reached a compromise on the lego but I can feel the tension as we're talking about the Lego <laughs> during this interview. So, so this is definitely an autism thing, if you don't mind me saying so. I can definitely <laughs> feel get closer. some non-verbal communication about Lego. I think we should leave this. Okay. 
So um, there's something there then about autism then that, that these things um, are very, very, very important to you, less important to someone like me who is not autistic and finding the middle ground there, yes? Yes. Like go to like a train station, what the trains go by. So, what about for you, Oak? What area of interest do you have? We can come back to you in a minute. Where Ryan, talk to us about your area of interest. <coughs> <laughs> but can we keep it short? Because it's interesting I know, to you. I know that. Okay. It's going on the computer and doing multiple different, just usually making stuff on the computer, like PowerPoints or characters yeah. or drawing 8-bit stuff in video games or making terrible video games and stuff. <laughs> Computer-involved stuff. So one of the things we try to do, or we do as a hub, which uh, mainstream schools don't do for young people with autism, is we give you that area of interest time so you don't have to fight for it. And also to, to help you uh, stay calm and happy, really, because calm and happy young people with autism are make for a calm and happy teacher of autism. <laughs> outside in the world Ryan or just is that just reserved for me uh, it's just reserved for that you that it's just reserved for the hub and home then. right and I think that's really important the hub and at home are the places where it's okay to be you yeah why wouldn't you do that voice out in test goes around in the world well obviously a people with video there and they uh, might do yeah why would yeah. they do that and B people might find me weird so okay so you understand that it's okay to be you when you're in a safe place yep. and that we have to hide those quirky behaviours when we're not in a safe place. So that's excellent. Do you think there's anything about you that, that um, makes you stand out? Well, my hair. Yeah, talk to me about your hair. Uh, it's very hard to blend in when you've got this big hair. Okay, but do you choose to have your hair? Yeah. So what, what, what is it that you like about having all your mane of hair? I'm not sure, it just feels like, and yeah. it, when I've had it cut before, it doesn't feel right. Okay. I remember once I locked myself in my room for a while, it, when I was younger, uh, hoping that it would grow back while I was in there. Okay, gosh, okay. Is there something about it that makes you feel safe? Yeah. Like a protective barrier, almost, would you say? Sort of. You can hide under it? If I want to, yeah, yeah. I could hide underneath yeah. it. Well, we 
There are lots of things that are good about autism. What's good about having autism? Well, obviously, like, you don't feel, like, regular emotions. Okay. You either don't feel them or you feel, like, the super versions of those emotions. Right. So, what does that mean, the super versions of those emotions? Like, if you, like, generally people will feel happy, they'll have a smile on their face. Yeah. But if you were, like, really happy and, like, the super version of it, it'd basically be, like, jumping around and, you know. Right. Having miniature ADHD. Okay. So when you're happy, you feel a bit out of control, is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. And so you could be jumping around and get told off, but actually the reason you're jumping around is because you're happy. Yeah. So what happens when you're sad? Now, obviously, with autism and the supervision of sadness, you, you know what that equals to. Right? I know, but yeah. we want to tell everybody else. So obviously it would be like sitting on the floor thinking about decisions and, you know, Meltdowns. Tell me about meltdowns. This is interesting. So a meltdown is like when a child is like really, really sad that like generally it's either caused by noise or a sudden change to the timetable. Okay. And that happens all the time at Parsons Academy, doesn't yeah. it? So it's you're saying it's a super version of feeling sad. Yeah. So tell me what a super version of feeling angry looks like. No, a super like normally when you're angry you hear like little grunts and but a super version of angry makes you feel like you want to like literally kill someone or yeah. generally hurt them really badly. Yeah, absolutely. It can also cause like the tensions or is like heat issues or whatever. To the beat I drum. I'm not scared to be seen. I make no apologies. This is me. that works with young people with autism. When we were pre uh, preparing for this video, I said to you all, I don't want to offend you guys, but one of the things we're going to talk about is fixed and rigid mindset of autism. And I was a little bit worried about saying that to you, and your reaction was lovely. What did you say? I, I was saying, uh, yeah, I know I have a fixed and rigid mindset, but I'm not willing to change that. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Nice bit of evidence. Okay. So basically what we mean by that is, is those times where your autism starts controlling you, starts managing you, it's the times when um, things just overwhelm you and possibly we have shutdowns and meltdowns. Can you explain to everyone what happens in that process? Do you want to try, Ryan? Well, give me a minute and I'll get okay. back to you. Oh, Jack. Okay, so I'll start talking about it. For me as a teacher, it's when you guys have completely shut down, when we, when we have to leave you and not speak to you because you're in high levels of distress and you all show it differently, okay? Sometimes uh, our fighters come in kicking and, and shouting and screaming and our, and our children that go into flight are, are running from lessons or under the bench in distress, right? Well, it's usually bad stuff or trigger happens for me, I just come back here and I either sit in silence over there or just, well, actually, no, it's just sit in silence over there. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jack, your meltdowns are different from Ryan's. Yours are very loud and shouty, aren't they? Not really, no. Oh, okay. Really, all I do is it's just come in, go under the banquet, and then after like five seconds, then one of the teacher comes and we talk about what's wrong. Okay. Well, it's only one minute. Yeah, I've had children under that bench literally for hours at a time. So, all day sometimes. <coughs> as Rice says, all, all day sometimes, but rarely. So, what is going through your mind when you're hours and hours and hours in silence? Is, are you thinking about it? Are you trying to calm yourself down? What's going on there, Rice? Not a lot. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Just unhappiness, I guess. So okay. Not particularly a Feeling a bit beaten by the world, a bit beaten by the mainstream world. Yeah, yeah and, and recovering from that.
group of friends when you were at primary school. Have you ever felt lonely? Oh, really, actually. I didn't really have a group of friends, you didn't? really. Okay. Really, I was friends with a boy named Liam, really, and that's it. Okay, but here... And there's also one thing that I do regret when I was younger. And I feel like it counts as bullying. It okay. I do regret it. I give his name was Matthew. I feel I wasn't treating him like a person, like really bad to him. Like I didn't. I don't know why I was doing it, but. Okay. Jack. I, I we, did feel bad. Yeah. We all make mistakes. Okay. Yeah. Every single one of us make mistakes. I haven't always been proud of my conduct as a teacher in the hub. I haven't always been proud of my the way I interact with my team, who are wonderful. That, you know, we all do things that, that are questionable from time to time because we're human beings. That's not you being autistic, that's you being a human being. Jack, it's okay to make mistakes. And you just forgive yourself, it was years ago. mainstream school, school in general is an ordeal mm. for a lot of children, but particularly for children with autism. What do you think the main challenges are for you? Uh, probably the people yeah. in there. Yeah. Their behaviour? Yeah. So give me some examples of the things people do that really make life tough for you. I remember one time one of the kids just stood up in English, took on the pegs, uh, put it there and yelled out, I'm a unicorn. <laughs> so we're laughing now, but it really isn't funny, is it? So they took a peg, stuck it in their hair and said, I'm a unicorn. Yeah. Bizarre behaviour. Yes. Unpredictable behaviour. Okay. Mm. So, and it's good that you can laugh about it now, but at the time... What is in an assessment. Oh, okay. So, and the rules in an assessment are what? Silence. So it's about breaking the rules, isn't yeah. it? What have you done as a young person with a strong voice that... Hundreds of other mainstream children at this school have not done. What have you achieved? Um, I helped the homeless. Absolutely. Uh, last year and the year before. Uh, so it started when I was going to my appointments in London. And I saw some homeless people. And ever since then, whenever we go up, we bring packs of gloves, hats, food up to them. Yeah. Fantastic. So you saw a situation of somebody in need and you cared about it and you did something about mm. it. So when you feel things, you feel things very strongly, is that fair to say? Yeah. So when you feel um, sad about something, it makes you want to do something about yeah. it. Yeah. Is, is that correct? Yeah, because oh. I was, I did feel sad for them. Yeah. And um, why did you feel sad for them? Uh, I also felt a bit annoyed because no one was taking any attention and just walking past. There was one time where, while in London, I saw somebody go up to a comms person who had a newspaper and looked over just to see the things and then walked off. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that's frustrating. Yeah. And is it about injustice in the world? Yeah. Rules, unfairness, injustice. Would you say that's a trademark of autism, responding to those things? I think so. Or yeah. is it just about being a decent human being? Probably the decent, yeah. because they are all day people too. Absolutely. So I think what the only difference is they don't have somewhere to live. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is you're incredibly kind, incredibly caring. You're a decent human being. You care about other people. You like the rules. All of these things sound incredible qualities to me. So why is it that we say you have a disability? All these things make you extraordinary mm. and different. Yeah. So why is it that you have the label of disability? I wonder who should have it. Um, I'm not sure because autism, I can understand why they would call it, but it's not really disability. No, it's not what I see. Oh, no. I see a very, very well-rounded, decent human being who goes out of his way to care about other people. So I think if autism is something that somebody has, I think it's making you an incredible person. Mm. 
your grave. Probably, yeah. into the meeting room upstairs and you just wouldn't, your shoulders were up, you wouldn't speak to me, um, you were hiding behind your mum, could barely make eye contact and look at you now just sitting here talking to me and making really good eye contact. I just wonder what happened to you Patrick to make you feel so afraid? Uh, mostly my primary. So mostly your primary. What sort of things happened? Uh, teacher being mean and kids being mean and everything. Okay. So teachers being mean, kids being mean, having a, a profound effect on you. Mm. Which do you still carry today? A little bit. Tell me about that Patrick. Mostly the teacher. Um, it just, just really affected me. Not letting me have the stuff what I needed, and now it's just affecting me more. Okay, so I know here you will go out with Mrs. Kerrigan, you'll go out with Mrs. Best to the shops in Harlow, away from your hometown, your old school's in your hometown. Talk to me about what that does to your head knowing that your old school is in your hometown. I don't like to go near it. At all? Not really, no. no. All these years later? Mm. So, a particular teacher, Patrick, or several teachers at this school? A particular teacher. A particular teacher, okay. Did she, um, was it she, may I ask? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember some of the things that she said to you? Mm. Was it just really. her general manner? Yeah. Okay. Ha what did you think? she thought about you? That I, want, I didn't need to be there, I needed to be somewhere else. That, that you didn't need to be at that school? Mm, but, like, not for a good reason, for bad. Okay. Okay. And yet, what we see is somebody completely different, Patrick. You are, and have always been since you've been with us, a wonderful young man. You have your bad days, like we all have our bad days, but you're polite, you're caring. Do you believe those things about yourself? Mm -hmm. How long did it take before you started to believe that you're okay as a person? Mm -hmm. no. Think about the time you spent at the hub. How, how many years have you been with us? Mm. Three. Three years. So three years it's taken, hasn't it, really, Patrick? Um, I noticed that you are using a, what's it called? Fiddle a fiddle toy. Tell me why why you need to use that. Explain that to me. It helps me keep calm and focus. Okay. Would you have been able to use something like that in your old school? No. Why not? They, they would not allow it. Why? I don't really know. I just don't. So what would you do if you were feeling nervous, like you are now? I would get what was closest to me and just... So, say you picked up a pen or a ruler that was closer to you and fiddled with it and banged it. What would you then get into trouble for doing that? Wow. Do you? Could you say each of you and? This is an opportunity for you. you, you can tell the truth, you don't need to be careful for people's feelings. Or whether the hub has made a difference to you yes. and why. Yes. Do you want to start, right? I used to be not good and now I am good. The end. <laughs> um, it's the best place for anyone with autism or any kind of, I would say with any kind of problem, etc. Anyway, um, 
Yeah, and like if you have, I don't know, any kind of difficulty or anything, then the hub starts. And um, basically, the entire hub, the entire everything about the hub is just designed to uh, help people, I guess, and students, and make them feel better and safer and everything. Thank you, Ralph. Jack. I was feeling a bit emotional, but you doing that with your glasses yeah. quickly ended that. Um, what, what about for you, the hub experience? Probably one of the best things in my life, really. Can you try and express why? It changed me so much, it has. If you remember the old me compared to the me now, it's a massive difference. But you have always been pretty much who you are. You've always been yes. a lovely boy, Jack, yes. who just needed a bit of a helping hand to to yeah. just cope with, with the massive ordeal of mainstream. So we haven't changed you. You've always been wonderful. Yes. We've just helped you manage, I think. Yeah. Oak? I can't see you. <laughs> Could you put into words, I know that you find school an ordeal. I know that if you had a choice, you wouldn't be here. No, I I'm, definitely wouldn't. I know that. And we all know that. Which is why it's so great that you come every day and you're here and you're part of us and you're part of our little family here. I put them a fight in the morning sometimes. Do you? Still now though? Yes. Wow, I did not know that. And yet you still get your, your kit on, your, your uniform on and you still walk through that door. That takes courage. And I think it would help Parsons Academy to know that you have to fight every day to walk through that door. Okay, that's really important. And you're doing it, which makes you brave. Okay. In your own words. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there are tons of people with autism and they kind of live really anywhere and generally they they do make a little bit of the population just like left-handers. Okay. And even, a, and an even smaller chance that they would be left-handers and autistic, just like me. Okay. So we have to we have to learn that in this world we've got lots of different sorts of people. Yeah, people with ADHD, depression, you know. People without certain limbs, certain uh, features, and maybe, and maybe like mutations and.